channel if you're new here my name is Heather Lewis and today we're gonna to be making over this hutch my goal for it is to turn it into a coffee bar and update it because it is outdated a little bit with the hardware and the color is not very in anymore but what I do really like about this is that this comes off completely so we can work on it as if it's two separate pieces and then put it all together as one at the end and um, it's also Broyhill so as you can see in the drawer here it's actually Broyhill I've done a few pieces from Broyhill and it is a really good quality um, brand so I know that this piece has good structure and bones it just needs to be updated and fit into a more modern style of home so we're gonna get this big part, the top part off, and we're gonna start by taking out the hardware. All right, so you guys may be wondering why I am not taking this outside, and that's because we are not going to be sanding down this piece. We will have to sand a little bit just to fill in the hardware holes, but other than that, this is not gonna require any sanding, and that is because in today's video, we're gonna be using the Paint Beyond. I'm going to have more details about this paint later in the video, but I just wanted to mention that we are staying inside for this entire project. Alright, so we're going to remove the hardware now. There's not that many pieces, so it should be pretty quick. As always, I'm putting it in a cup. Um, just to keep it all together. So the hardware is all out and I did get asked the question of why don't you clean before you take the hardware off? And right here is a perfect example. You can see if we would have cleaned the piece off first, we would have missed all of this dirt and grime um, that was on underneath the hardware. So that's why we take the hardware off first and then we clean. So that brings us into the next step, which is cleaning. All right, so I got my go-to cleaner in here, which is Dawn dish soap. It's really good at cutting the grease and the grime and getting everything off. That's why people use it for dishes, right? So I've got my microfiber towel here. I like to use this because it really grabs on to anything that is on the dressers or whatever you're cleaning off. So we're gonna get started and start cleaning the piece off.
And we can't forget about this piece either, so we're gonna go ahead and clean this one as well. Whenever you are um, cleaning off a, a piece, don't forget to go back and rinse it all off so that the soap isn't staying on the piece. So we're going to go ahead and rinse it with regular water. Alright, now that that's done, let's get on to the next step. All right, so we don't have to do this on every project, but I did mention that we were gonna be filling in the hardware holes. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. And I have the Color Changing Wood Filler um, by Minwax. There, this is the second type of wood filler I've tried. This is more so of a putty consistency. As you can see, it's more putty than it is like that wood color. Um, the more grainy stuff and I prefer this one over the other one because this one is so much easier to put on and it actually lets you know when it's uh, dry because it goes on pink it's natural wood color once it's dry so we're gonna go ahead and fill in the hardware holes because we are not going to be keeping the same hardware for this one I'm just using a small putty knife I got this at the dollar store um, super cheap, but I mean, it's also, it works really well, so uh, it comes in handy. And we're just gonna start filling in these holes. Now, if you've never actually filled holes in, the way you do it is you grab a decent amount, probably more than you would need. You can see I have extra on here and you shove it into the hole, like you push on it and shove it into the hole. And really what you're doing is just trying to shove more and more and more in there so that um, once, so that once it dries, it is level and there's just no hole anymore. So just keep pushing it in, shoving it in. Do your best to fill it up as much as you can the first time. Sometimes you do have to go back after it dries and do it a second time. So that's why you just wanna make sure you do it really good and you fill it in from the start. So now that all of these are filled in, we have to wait for it to dry. Um, it says it can dry in like 30 minutes. It depends on how thick it is, but we will know when it's dry once um, the pink is now a tan color. But the nice thing is that because these are two separate pieces, we can get started on the top part. All right, so typically this would be the stage where we start sanding and we will have to do a little bit of hand sanding on the hardware holes, but nothing too extreme where you have to go out and sand the entire surface so that the paint can adhere to, adhere to it. And that's because we are going to be using Beyond Paint today. Beyond Paint is a different type of paint than I am used to. It is a newer paint. I actually had to order it online because it is so popular right now that you can't even get it in the stores. So I don't know a whole bunch about this paint. This will be the very first time that I'm using it, but it is a one step process. And let's see, um, you can use it on wood, linoleum, glass, laminate, plastic, varnish, tile, uh, metal, and painted surfaces. So. You can use it on a lot of things. Cleaning off the piece is absolutely a must, but when it comes to sanding, priming, 
and top coating. That is not something that you have to do because it is all in here. It takes two to four hours to be dry to the touch and um, it is water-based. So I chose the color Pewter. It's a dark gray color. Oh yeah, see it says no stripping, no sanding, no priming. So perfect, you guys can see it right on the top there. Um, all in one, it, bind, it bonds, primes, and seals. Quick, easy, and durable. So this is like every painter's like dream right here. This is like the easiest or this paint makes your projects so easy to do. Um, this isn't sponsored. I'm, I'm just learning to love this paint. So as long as it looks amazing on the piece, I'm gonna fall in love with it. And this will probably be the paint I do all winter, honestly. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get started by um, painting this piece first. And then once the hardware holes have dried on the bottom section, we'll hand sand and get to painting on that one. All right, we are opening this up and gonna get ready to use it. Um, this paint is a little bit thicker. Usually when I use thicker paints, I will put water in it, but this for Beyond Paint, it says not to because it does have that priming and top coat part to it. So um, I don't know, it just screws it up, I guess, but we're not gonna add the water in it. We're gonna paint it when it's this thick, so. Probably gonna just plop into here. We'll see. <laughs> you guys, like you can literally see, it's like gelatin consistency. Plop. Oops. All right, I'm gonna start with that for now. Okay, so before we get started on painting, I do want to mention that I got this piece at Goodwill for $29.99. When I bought the piece, I didn't realize that it didn't have a top. This is the first time I've ever, or I have ever done a hutch. So I didn't, when I came home, I was kind of disappointed to see that, like, the top was missing. You know, the top was missing. But apparently, um, hutches always have this to protect your... Um, ceiling or at least that's what I've heard that they have it for that reason but I guess it makes sense because it's a lot higher and you don't really see it so I just thought I would mention that because I thought it was so funny because I had no idea but now we do so we're gonna get started on painting this top part so weird consistency I'm not used to it let's start It definitely has a strong smell to it. Um, I maybe wear a mask. I'm not going to, but you might want to because it is a pretty strong smell. These are always so tedious. Make sure if you have like little designs like this that you're um, taking your time with them because they can either clump up or you can miss spots. So I'm just taking my time getting all of these. I think now is a good time to mention that I'm not going to worry too much about these back parts because we are going to be adding peel and stick to it. So um, if I get it on, that's okay because the peel and stick, because the peel and stick will just cover it up, but um, otherwise I'm not going to worry about it.
Okay. Now that the first coat is on everything, we're gonna move over to the bottom piece and we're gonna start sanding those little bits that uh, filled in to cover the hardware holes. So we're gonna let this dry and start with the bottom piece. So as I mentioned before, Beyond Paint doesn't require any sanding prep work other than cleaning. Um, but because I did fill in these holes, there is an extra amount of roughness and um, like an extra layer of extra layer of stuff on top. So I am going to be taking a hundred grit sandpaper and just just smoothing out the surface so it's ready for the Beyond Paint. I want to show you guys the wood filler so that you can see what it looks like after it's dry um, because like I said it goes on pink and then it dries a normal wood color so that you know that it's dry. So this is what the wood filler is supposed to look like once it's dry. You can tell that it's the natural color instead of the pink color. So we're going to go ahead with our 100 grit sandpaper and just smooth this out. All right, so just like that, everything is all smooth and we're gonna go ahead and take these drawers out. Now that the drawer's out, I do wanna make sure that I'm just wiping back the piece one more time after sanding a little bit. I don't wanna get any of the sawdust into the paint, so we're gonna wipe it all back. Now that that has been taken care of, we can continue to paint on this bottom section. All right, now that the first coat is on everything, all we have to do is wait for the paint to dry. So the first coat is now dry and I really like the coverage. I barely used any paint because it was so thick that I'll be able to use it on several projects. But we are gonna go through and scuff sand this with 120 grit sandpaper because with it being such a thick product, it is a little bit, it's not as smooth as I would like it. So. Before we get into the second coat, I'm gonna make sure to scuff sand it and try to make it level and smooth um, before we do that. So we're gonna get started on that. And the point of sanding this is not to take that layer of paint off. It's just to make sure that everything is smooth and there are no bumps before you get started on the next coat. So again, we're not trying to take the paint off.
as always, we're gonna have to wipe this back so that this extra sand dust or sawdust doesn't get into the new coat of paint. All right, we're starting on the second coat. I decided to flip this over because it'll be easier to get on the um, tops and the bottoms of these, and then we'll flip it back up to do the sides. But this is just an easier angle to be able to paint. So we're gonna get started on doing that. Okay, now that the second coat is on, all we have to do is let this dry. And because we don't need to have a top coat on, we are gonna let it dry and get started on putting the peel and stick wallpaper on. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we are going to be putting wallpaper, peel and stick wallpaper on here. So this is the design that I chose for it. I think the black and the white floral design will look really good with the dark gray. So I already measured this out. All you guys have to do is measure the lengths to be able to put this in. So as you can see here, it's not very per like it's not always going to be the most perfect, but it's as good as it needs to be to look uniform and look nice. So there's going to be a little bit of overhang and that's fine. Once we get it in, we'll be able to take that out. But we have it all measured up, so now I'm going to start peeling off the backing of this. And when I'm peeling it off, I'm only gonna be doing a few inches because I don't wanna overwhelm myself with the rest of it. <laughs> And I've got a card here to be able to keep the bubbles out. So I'm just going to line it up the best that I can. And I'm still pretty new to peel and stick, so bear with me here. But it should look a little something like this. Okay. Then I'm going to take from the back here and pull this this way so that more of it is coming out and I'm able to lay more down. And again, I'm only doing a little bit at a time because I wanna do my best to keep these bubbles out. So you can see that I'm just starting to lay this down. Like that. 
okay if you get a little bit on the edges because you can always um, take that out once you're finished. But the most important part is just getting it on without bubbles. And if it makes it easier for you, you can go ahead and cut some of this excess off just so that you're not having to pull as much. All paper is on, I'm taking an X-Acto knife just to get all the excess off. So I'm gonna be starting here. Really with an X-Acto knife, you do not have to apply that much pressure. And just like that, peeling it off. And there that is. Now have the hutch, the finished hutch, up against the staging wall. It is 100% done and I think it looks stunning. I love the floral peel and stick that is on there. I think it matches so well with the gray and the black knobs. I think that someone is gonna love having this in their house as a, a copy bar or they might keep it a hutch, but I think that it turned out amazing. This is definitely one of my favorite projects. I think the outcome turned out so beautiful. Though I feel like hutches are a little bit harder to do because you have to paint on the inside of that I had to paint on the inside of the top here. I think it turned out really beautiful and it was definitely worth the work. I love the black knobs. The black knobs were just wooden knobs from an old, old dresser that I had done and I just spray painted them black, creating this beautiful black sleek color. As far as Beyond Paint goes, you guys, I love this paint. Not only did the color turn out beautiful, but it, it made the project so much easier and so much faster. Instead of having to put on a coat of primer, two coats of paint, and a top coat, four whole coats, all we had to do was two coats. Not to mention that we didn't even have to sand the piece as well. So with my situation in Minnesota and winter coming up, um, the weather's gonna start getting colder and I'm gonna be wanting to take my pieces outside to sand less and less. Having Beyond Paint around is such a great option because this minimalizes the outside work that I'm gonna have to do. Just comment down below guys if you like this hutch, if you like the color, and if you've tried Beyond Paint or not. I would love to know what you guys think. All right, you guys, so this is gonna be the end of the video, but I do wanna mention that we just hit 600 subscribers on YouTube, and that just means the absolute world to me. I love seeing those big milestones be hit. That means we're only 400 subscribers away from 1,000, and that is gonna be our goal by the end of the year is to hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you aren't yet subscribed, please please click the subscription box down below because it's really gonna help our channel grow. Otherwise, make sure you like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.